the Spirit proceeds from the Father. It does not mean the Spirit is a separate person from the Father. We never, I don't never said separate. Well, okay. does, does the Father proceed from the Father? No. So then the Spirit is not the Father? The Spirit is the Father. So the Father it? proceeds from the Father. Oh. Is God. Is God. So, want to start with your question again? Yeah, yeah. So, um, it's uh, yeah, pleasure to be able to speak to God Logic um, here today. Kind of missed my chance last week, so I wasn't able to hang around. Um, my question initially over there was how you reconcile um, teaching people that God is more than one person. When when Jesus was asked what the most important commandment was, he quoted Deuteronomy 6:4, which in the Hebrew is uh, "Hear Israel, Jehovah our God, Jehovah is Ehad." Then Mark 12:29. Jesus says, yeah, here is rather Lord, our God is one. Yeah. Now in Mark 4, when Jesus is being tempted by Satan and is being offered, basically all the kings of the world, if Jesus will bow down and worship him, you know, Jesus replies from Deuteronomy 6, 13, he says, worship Jehovah your God and serve him only. And so... Who did he say that to? To Satan, when Satan tries to... Tempt him. Yeah. He says, worship Jehovah... And serve him only. And um, you know, in Deuteronomy 6 7, uh, there's a fascinating passage that after Moses gives this commandment to Israel that Jehovah, our God, Jehovah is one, he says, And you shall recite this to your children, and you shall talk about them at the time of your going on the road you're lying down at the time you're rising up and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as to you an emblem before you rise. Now, I'm really struck how Moses instructed the people that, that the narrative that Jehovah was one was so simple that a mother could explain that concept to her child. And my concern is that the Orthodox Church has grossly corrupted the simple revelation of Scripture that Jehovah God is a single self and turned it crazy to the counterfeit Jesus where he has been elevated onto the face of God in direct opposition to what Jehovah said and says you have no other gods before my face so that's essentially my opening gambit to you dear brother yes okay so <clears throat> to respond to uh, Mark 12 29 where Jesus quotes Deuteronomy the Shema I would say that uh, I think that that actually points to God being having a plurality within his singular within his singular uh, essence, because as you quoted correctly, the word is akad, which can be used for absolutely singular, but also can be used for a compound one. Uh, in Genesis chapter two verse twenty four, it says that a man. This is why a man should leave his mother and his father, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one akad flesh. Now, obviously, this is showing a compound unity with using the word akad, using the word one. It's the same thing that's being used in Deuteronomy 6.4, where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is akad, one. So I, I, so I wouldn't say that Deuteronomy 6.4 automatically shows a plurality within God's nature. I would, show, I would say that we have Genesis before Deuteronomy, and then we have Deuteronomy, that shows us explicitly that God has a plurality within his nature, which then we can conclude that Deuteronomy 6.4, Yahweh is a plural being. Okay, so, so you, you've told the audience here that the Hebrew word ahad can mean a complex unity or a compound one. Can you show me any Hebrew biblical lexicon that's ever been written in the history of the world? When you look up the word ahad, you are gonna find the definition compound unity or composite. Well, I, I think that this is, I don't have to quote a lexicon no, no, for you. It's important, wait, brother, wait, because wait, biblical lexicons... Wait, can, I, can I answer you? Okay, but just, just right. Biblical lexicons, just so you know, give so us I the definitions of words in the Bible. Yes. And no biblical hex, uh, no Hebrew lexicon, no Greek lexicon, in fact, no English lexicon, will ever define the word one for you to mean a composite unity or a compound unity. Okay, so when Adam and Eve are joined together and they become one flesh, are they one person or are they two? So what you 
find here the word, the noun, flesh, scripture tells us is comprised of two separate things. Two. One man one. and one woman joined together to make one flesh. What we find in 1 Corinthians so are they, are they 16. One, are they one person? No, so we are told, the scripture tells us that in the, in the context of a man and a woman coming together in marriage, or in 1 Corinthians 6, 16, a man and a <coughs> prostitute coming together, that they are one flesh. So scripture tells us the word flesh equates to two separate things, one man and one woman coming together. Yeah? So are they one person? They're not one person. Okay, beautiful. They're not one in unity. So do you, they're not, but you just, tells you just us, said that they come together. It doesn't say they come together. So you're saying that if You I, said that. I didn't say in unity. You said that they come together. What is to come together. What, yes. is, what, is, what does unity mean? There's different, so if a man lies with a prostitute, are you telling me in 1 Corinthians 6, 16, where they come together and they form one flesh, that they are in unity? They're united. Yes. Yes. And they are the united physically. Yeah. Very good. So yeah. they come together. Okay, so scripture tells us the noun flesh is comprised of one man and one woman. You're repeating this. No, no, no. Just like the word day comprises, scripture tells us, of one morning and one evening. Just as in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul teaches us that our body is made up of many members, eyes, ears, nose, feet, but they come together to form one body. The issue is, ladies and gentlemen, nowhere in scripture is the noun, Jehovah, God or Lord, ever defined as one or more things coming together to form any kind no, of union. Nobody said that. So no, but that's the point. No, so no, you're, not the point. Okay, but my point that. is this, brother. You just, you just talked for like a, a long time. Man, you gotta let me okay. talk. The example. How long? How long wait, how, woman, how long are you gonna talk? I just this last sentence. The example of one man and one woman coming together to form one flesh is irrelevant Got you. to Deuteronomy 6 4. Got you. Because nowhere in Scripture is the noun Jehovah, God, or Lord, or God, sorry, Jehovah, Lord, or God ever defined as one or more things coming together. Understood. To so. Form one other thing. Got you. I, I, I'll let you go right after me. Be okay. So you said that it's not togetherness, um, together is not unity. But then we got to the conclusion that together is unity. That's literally what unity is when things are together. That's what a unity is. Are you shaking your head no? It depends what your definition of unity is. Okay. When you, when, when you, okay. When you, when you unite something, when you unite something, there's a multiplicity of things that come joined together. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So that's what a unity is. So that's what together is. Defines so, so, one flesh is I, one man, well, well, one woman. Well, got you. So yeah. are they, when they, when it says one flesh, there are actually, it's a it's a compound unity not, in the one no, no, flesh, no. is that correct? It does not say compound unity. I know it doesn't it does say that, say I'm asking flesh. if that's what it is. I'm not going to add to scripture. Well, you don't have, you don't have to add, okay, you don't have to add to scripture. Okay, thank you. When it says one flesh, is it one person or two persons? Two persons. Okay, is, does Adam have his own flesh? Yes. Does Eve have her own flesh? Yes. Are, they two, are these two flesh come together? Yes. How is it then just one flesh? Because that's what scripture tells us. Beautiful, so you understand even through scripture, the word ekad can be used to show you a compound unity no. where one thing and another thing come together and they're united. It's not so wait, wait, pause. I, I gave you your turn. I gave you your turn. So I, I like to cross-examine a bit just to make my point. So with that being said, just because the word akkad or one is used it doesn't, doesn't necessitate that it's an absolute singular thing. Okay? When I showed, when I showed you with Adam and Eve, it says they're akkad, one flesh. They're not, they're not, they're not one person as you admit it. They're two. But they're joined together. So Yahweh is a one, he's one God, one singular divine ultimate entity that has multiple persons within his essence. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are united in the essence of God, and therefore God is Hekad, one. Okay, so guys, you gotta listen really carefully to what he's saying. He's conflating the word one with the word flesh. What? Oh, well, I'm us. not. Because you see, we know that one flesh in, in, in relation to a man and a woman, you have two people, yeah? The same example in terms of one day comprises of one morning and one evening. So we know one day is one 24 hour period. The word one doesn't denote any form of complex unity or complexity or compound. Uh, yeah. It is the word one, yeah, that tells us there is one of something. So two days tells us there are two lots of 24 hours. 
if there are two flesh or two couples, we know there are four adults involved. Yeah? Your argument has no founding, and more importantly... But you said Adam and Eve are, are, are their own individual flesh. But the point is, we know that Jehovah God has defined the word flesh in Scripture as comprising of two adults. No, that's not, no, no, I'm sorry. That's so not... The word, now, the, the, noun the, the word flesh, flesh? The word flesh equals one man and one woman. No, it doesn't. One. No, it doesn't, bro. So, what you, <laughs> look. What? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what the word flesh means. Okay. And you're not going to see that it entails man and woman. You're not going to see that. But what you're going to see is the word flesh. Human. Humanity. Yeah. Your, your body. Your phys yeah. physical nature or whatever. Or, okay. or carnal nature. Yeah. You're not going to see man and woman. No. But unless you're talking about the context where the man and woman come together and unite as one flesh. Exactly. So scripture defines us. It's talking about bodies. The word flesh in scripture, either a man and a woman coming together and marry in marriage or a man and a prostitute when they come together, that that union is called flesh. Yeah. Nowhere in scripture will you find Jehovah, the name of the almighty God, the noun Elohim or God or Adonai or Lord. You will never find scripture defining that word as two or more things coming together to form a Godhead. You will never read Jehovah, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit come together to join one God. Never happens anywhere in Scripture. This argument has zero bounds. Can I, no grounds at all. Can I, can I say yeah. The reason you won't find that in Scripture is because we also believe God is absolutely one. The Trinity is in a common together with three persons. The three persons come from the Father by, the two persons come from the Father by nature, by intellect yeah. and volition. So this idea that you're trying to posit, that you're arguing against someone, is, can you explain to me how, the, like metaphysically, genuinely demonstrate to me that the three persons negate the oneness of God? Okay, so multiple times in scripture, it's not us, you. Let, let me, yeah, let me, multiple times in scripture, Jehovah describes himself <laughs> as a single self. Now huh? the clue there, wait, when say Jehovah that, God say, speaks, wait, say that again. Okay, when Jehovah God speaks in the first person uh -huh. and says, myself, uh -huh. I did this, yeah. or he's referred to using third person singular pronouns such as himself, we all know that the word self, myself, is referring to a single person. There are not really? three selves in a single self, are there, ladies and gentlemen? Now, Jehovah God is referred to using first person singular pronouns pronouns 20,000 times in scripture. How many times does he use plural? This is very, very simple. How many times does he use plural? Complex. How many times does he use we and our and us? A few times. It's so does, so does that does what? that entail that Yahweh is now multi-personal? No. Okay, so when uh, when Yahweh uses singular pronouns like myself, me, or I, that automatically means that he's absolutely one singular person. But when he uses us, we, and our, uh, it doesn't mean that he's plural persons. So Come on, man. Brothers and sisters, look. In any, in all your come on, man. Come on now, come darling. on now. Okay, no. okay, you might laugh at me, yeah. If you were going to stake your life on a piece of information that you believe was true or false, if you have twenty thousand witnesses, yeah, that prove one thing: that God is a single self, and you have literally four or five instances where in Scripture you have a God speaks using "we" or "our." Are you going to place your eternal destiny on three? Or four verses or 20,000 verses. Are you going to trust Yeshua, your Messiah, the anointed one of Yehovah God, or are you going to trust a bunch of crazy individuals who manipulated the doctrinal creeds of the Christian faith that's a that, that's over a fallacy. hundreds of years? That's a fallacy. It's not a fallacy. It's the world fallacy. Beyond, beyond but you still haven't just, but I'm okay. sorry, my friend. Okay. You have not broken down how when God says, Jehovah says, that I or myself did this or you know me that that automatically means he's one person but when he says us we and our that doesn't mean that he has a plurality of persons can you break that down please yeah I can do so my answer is this in scripture we allow the clear and majority passages to interpret the minority of ambiguous passages brother so I'm clearly not going to deny there is the word our and we in a handful of passages uh -huh. but it would be foolish wouldn't it to allow those passages to supersede the clear and unambiguous testimony of Scripture. Well, okay, I, I, I 
like what you said there, but this is what I would uh, suggest to you. Okay. That you don't eliminate the the other side because you're 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 too hard on one side. You're, you you see the you know the the I the singular pronouns and you you're resting on that. that God is absolutely singular yeah. when it comes to personhood, Why? Why? but igno but re disregarding the parts where he says he, he, he we and us and our he's using plural. Are many are there? Would well, you there, admit that? Would you admit that? There's, there's, uh, sure, sure. But th this is my point. This is my point. Yes, there are not as many uh, 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 plural pronouns that God uses as when it comes to singular pronouns. But you can't negate them. Well, we so if you're going to say, look, we, no, but you are. You're no, saying no, no. You, you're you, saying that there's only sing. He's only a singular person because he uses singular pronouns. Re but rejecting that he's plural when he uses plural pronouns. But you're doing the opposite. No, I'm saying he's both. I'm saying he's both. I'm saying that he's singular in his essence, plural in his personhood. So guys, in Hebrews 6, 13. So for me, my view, yeah. my, the, my theology works with the scripture. With you, you're contradicting it. You you tell people your theology works with the scripture, but brother, it doesn't. It rips apart the integrity of scripture. In Hebrews 6, 13, <laughs> listen to what the writer of Hebrews testifies. For when God, when right the of God Hebrews. made a promise to Abraham. You just went to Hebrews? Since he had no one greater to swear by, he swore by himself. Ladies and gentlemen, if God swore by himself, uh -huh. how many selves is that? How many selves is Jehovah? Mm. How many selves? Mm. So if you don't, know, but he's asking about, he's asking so about, we don't, believe, believe, guys. we don't believe God is three selves. You believe There's God is will. three persons, yeah, with one will. How one many power. persons, how many, how many selves is in one person, brother? How many souls? There's one soul because there's one. Okay. One soul because yeah. there's one divine essence. There's Mike, one is not this one or not? Well, the thing is, so, even guys, so I just showed you no. that in Hebrews, in Hebrews 6. Wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah. I don't have to yeah. So there's one will in the Trinity. All actions are done by Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, there's, not, um, there's not a different will of the Father and the Son. As Christ says, I do all the things I see my Father doing because they have the same will. They do all the same things. I am working. The same them, do they, they, do. they do. They do. Christ and the incarnation has two natures, not the human will, because the same way, because there's one nature in the Trinity, there's one will, when Christ is a human and divine nature, he must uh, go have two wills. Yeah. Understand? Okay, so, brother here is, is just raised a lot of points. He's raised that, that Yeshua, Jesus, has got two natures. He said that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit have one will. Yep. What I was just getting to, in, in a simple sense, is that Jehovah God is spoken of throughout Scripture as having a single self. Now, in 1 Corinthians 2, 11, yeah, this is Paul this is, is talking, he teaches about the spirit that is in a man. Now, just another very simple example of how the followers of Yeshua believe that the Father God is a single self. And in Hebrews 2, the 11, The Father God says, is a single self. Beautiful. Yeah, is, is a single self. Amen. Do you know, uh, the problem is here is you're, you don't, you need to understand antinomy, this idea that there are opposites in God that are true at the same time. Okay. You're sacrificing the oneness for the plurality, but yet yeah. both can be preserved. Okay. Exactly. Brother, well, no, in, there can in be your, both. It's mind, both. It's both and, mind, not either or. No, you can't. See, because you see, when Jesus said the most important but you went to, was you, you went to, to Hebrews, right? Worship. You have, yeah, we can do Hebrews, brother. The, the most important worry. commandment is wait. Well, hey, hey, wait, you was about to, to say it. Worship. The you have your God. So okay. So, so wait, that's wait, a, sorry, brother. So one but you, you, just, you just broke down another point. Let, let me let so me engage asking, with you. I was asking you brother there. Okay. So talking about this, these three Sorry. wheels not united. One so will. one will united, three persons, whatever. In one that Corinthians two eleven, yeah. Um, Paul says this: For who among men knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man that is in him? Yeah. Thus, so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. That's so I prose to you all. Yeah. My spirit yes, is no more a distinct person than me than the spirit of Jehovah God is a distinct person than Jehovah. Oh man, you're just, you're just that like is, your Jehovah. That's crazy. That is okay. So my brother here, God Logic, has a spirit according to Paul. Yeah, and Paul says no one knows the mind of God Logic, this fine gentleman, other than his spirit. And then Paul, from Paul uh, compares Paul, myself, you, you to Jehovah God because he says Jehovah God has one spirit. Yeah. And that spirit Spirit is Jehovah. So they are indistinguishable. They are not separate persons. They are one. Oh. We agree. But the thing is here, oh right, my is that goodness. Do, do you believe the Spirit of God is a separate person? Distinct. Yes. Distinct. So there are two persons. Well, let, let him respond. But the There's thing three. Is, okay, look. Firstly, you've just gone to a verse where it talks about the Spirit of God, and you haven't bothered to ask the question that's really relevant here is why do we believe the Holy Spirit is a third person? You're just going to a verse and saying, well, look, this is what it said. But why don't you ask us where do we get the idea from? Because when I go, okay, first of all, I'll ask you a question, right? Did you come from your mother? 
mother? Yes. Okay, do you share her nature? Yes. Are you, is she a person? Yes. Are you a person because she's a person? I suppose, yes. And you are human because she's human? Yes. And you agree to proceed or to come forth from something means you are not that thing. You have come out of it. Yeah. Okay, so when the Holy Spirit, ek parumano, it comes forth from the Father in John 15, 26, and is sent by the Son, it, you agree that if it comes forth, it shares a nature, and if the Father is a person, same way your mother is a person. So the Holy Spirit... No. no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, which he admitted, if you proceed forth from, you are not that thing. So the Holy Spirit is not the Father, he proceeds from the Father, yeah. and he admitted that if he comes forth, he shares his nature and he's a person. So what does that mean? Yes, he's a person with the divine nature according to John 15. Guys, 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 this is, this is, guys, 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 the definition of a self-licking lollipop. Like a little five-year-old child, he's just gone to the shop, he's gone in, he's brought himself a little lollipop, he's opened it and he's licking it and you're applauding him. Why are you applauding him? What he's just spoken there is pure philosophy. I agreed with the statements that he made. None of those statements are founded in scripture. What? That's the point, brothers and sisters. Wait, wait, wait. He, when, he, when he, said, he said the spirit proceeds forth from the Father. That, that's literally John 15, 26. Okay, guys. And you agreed to the premises. So, guys. So you've gone back. Of course. The spirit proceeds from the Father. It does not mean the spirit is a separate person from the Father. I don't know if you're aware. Okay. Does, does the Father proceed from the Father? No. So then the spirit is not the Father? The Spirit is the Father. So the Father proceeds from the Father. The brain malfunction is crazy. I'm not going to lie. No, no, no. Okay, so guys. 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 Yeah. Well, here's, a, here's an interesting question, right? Because there is a... Just for that everyone's aware. Okay. 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 Guys, guys, listen, listen. I mean, oh, yeah, so in Isaiah, we've already, we've already confirmed. So Paul says explicitly that the Spirit of God let, let him say this is no more a distinct person than the, than, the, than the Father, than your spirit is of you. That's not what he These says. gentlemen are saying that the Trinity teaches Jehovah God is, a, is one what comprised of three who's, and these three who's are three distinct persons. Yep. That directly contradicts what Paul teaches in 1 Corinthians 2.11. Now let me take you to Isaiah. Isaiah, well, 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 no, 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 so this guy over here, yeah. no, no, brother, yeah, we're, 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 yeah, we, we got this, yeah, we're, we're, we're right here, we're here right now, so, and I'm going to say, okay, I need just a few seconds no, 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 of course, there are some passages in the New Testament that talks about the Holy Spirit that can appear confusing, that is why we must use the Hebrew Bible as our foundation, but it's not confusing to us as Trinitarians, good, well, let me, let me, let, let's look at what Jesus. Let's look what Isaiah says regarding the Spirit of Jehovah. If we go to Isaiah, and then and then let's quickly look the at what priest. Jesus says about the Spirit okay. of Jehovah. Okay. So in Isaiah 40, 40 verse thirteen. Okay. We see we see Isaiah pose a rhetorical question. Huh. He says, "Who has directed Jehovah's Spirit or taught him as his counselor?" Yeah. So Isaiah is speaking again of the Spirit of yeah. Jehovah oh, as the Spirit. Spirit as of Jehovah's Spirit, just as my spirit is my spirit, not two distinct persons. Got you. Now, lastly, to my love, thank you very much. Okay, lastly. Yeah, okay. lastly, in um, in Matthew, uh, sorry, also Job. Job says, "The Spirit of God has made me, mm. and the breath of Shaddai gives life to me." Amen. So again, Job does not distinguish between the breath of Jehovah God and the Spirit of of Adonai, they are one in the same. Yeah, that's in the yeah. Uh, amen. 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 Distinct yeah, no, no, okay, hold on. Stop. Stop. Form. The breath and the spirit are not distinct persons. That's the same, same spirit. Person. You're right. But we're talking about the father. Okay, look. You, you said you said you said let's go to the Hebrew scriptures. You brought up Isaiah. Let's stay in Isaiah. So we're talking about the Holy Spirit, check? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Isaiah 48. The father okay. proceeds from the father. Verse 15, it says, I even I have spoken and called him. I have brought him, and he will prosper in his way. Who's speaking? 
Uh, I'll have to go to Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. All right, look, look, look. I, I got you. I got you. Look. Verse 14. Verse 14. Go one up to 12. Hold on. All right. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Listen to me, O Jacob. And Israel, whom I called, I am he, I am the first and the last, yeah. right? Yeah. That's jo Jehovah speaking, yeah. you would agree? Okay. My hand laid the foundation of the earth, yep. my right hand spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand forth together. Amen. Assemble all of you and listen. Who among, you, who among them has decreed these things? Yeah. The Lord loves him. He shall perform his purpose on Babylon and his arm shall be against the Chaldeans. God's still speaking, right? Okay. I, I even I, am he. Uh, I'm sorry. I, even I, have spoken and called him. I have brought him, and he shall prosper in his way. Still Jehovah speaking? Draw near to me. Hear this. From the beginning, I have not spoken in secret. Still Jehovah speaking? We'll see. What, what do you mean, we'll, we'll see? see. We'll where, see. Where does it change? The, the point is, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, no. No, 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 no ladies and gentlemen. Us. Us. Sorry, you asked me why. Okay. okay. So here's the thing that I just want to make something stop. clear. You asked me a question. I didn't. Okay. I said, I said, I said you, you asked me who is still speaking. Yeah, who's yeah. speaking. Yeah. So, and, and what I said was, um, I'm not certain if that still is Jehovah speaking. Well, yeah, I didn't know. Because we know in the book, well, first of all, not Isaiah, I've not studied Isaiah 48 recently in depth, but we know throughout the prophets, that the speaker can change from the prophet to the prophet speaking in the first person Whoa. of Jehovah. The so, so who? So you wait, wait. Do you think that you think Isaiah is saying, "Draw near to me, hear this"? I have. Would, would a prophet have, not say that? from from the beginning? Would a I, prophet not say I that? even I have spoken. I have called him. Sorry, sorry, brother. Sorry. Of course, a prophet would say that. I have called him. Yeah. Who did Isaiah call? No, sorry. You know, we we just swapped to this bit here. You're saying you're saying would a prophet say, "Draw near, near to me and hear this"? I would say absolutely. A prophet would say That's that. Crazy. Problem, there's a problem. So well, because it says, "Thus the Lord." Because it says, says, "From the beginning, I have not been in secret." As in, if you read this entire text, guys, every what, time. What's, what's the point? Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, see, every single time I read this, anytime I say "I," I want you all to say it together with me. Can you do that, guys? No, 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 you, yeah. you, okay. Well, you're playing to your audience. You're not making. I'm gonna. I want you to do. Argument. I want you to do it with me. Can you do that with me? No, 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 no. Every time it says "I," I just want you to read it with me. Okay. So, just, just give me. Listen to me, O Jacob, and Israel, whom I have called. So, same person speaking, everyone. Yes. I am he, I am the first and... The last. Yeah, and the last. And my hand laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand spread out unto the heavens. When I, I call to them, they stand okay. forth together. Assemble all of you and listen. Who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. He shall perform his purpose on Babylon, and his arms shall be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken and called him. I, have brought him and he will prosper to his way. Stop. That's, not, that's God I speaking, reckon, right? I reckon that on, on this, at the moment, I've got no issue with that being... Okay, continue. He's still... So God is speaking. Yeah. So what does God say? Okay. Draw near to me and hear this. From the beginning, I, have not spoken in secret. Uh-huh. From the time it came to be, I, have been there. Do you hear that? Is that God speaking? Yeah. Okay, now watch what God what says. And now he says, this is Jehovah speaking. No, no, sorry, stop, stop for a second. This is what Jehovah says. No, I don't know. And yeah. now... No. Adonai Yahweh, Adonai Jehovah, has sent me and his, and his spirit. Okay. okay, guys. Let's get that lollipop, ladies and gentlemen. No, brother, brother, just, just, just let's submit no, no, this point. Let's submit this point. Okay. If no. God is the one who's speaking, no. it says that God, okay. Jehovah says that Jehovah sent me. How can Jehovah be sent okay, if on. he's only one person? Okay. But then, wait, wait. He says, Jehovah says, Jehovah sent me and his spirit. So Jehovah sent Jehovah and his spirit. How are they the same person? Did the Father no. send himself? Did the Father no. send himself with his own spirit? No. So he sends himself with his, his own self? Or himself? So ladies and gentlemen, is the person there's a really important principle that, that if you, if you <laughs> believe the in the authority of Scripture, That's right. and in particular the New Testament as being our guide, yeah, we've got to submit to the testimonies <laughs> of Luke chapter 24 and Acts chapter 1. Uh, okay. That tells wait, us wait, that after... Can you wait, answer the question? I'm going to answer the you question. Haven't. You haven't. Every, haven't. Single, time, Give me a second, every single time. Every single time any of us have brought up a question. No, no, this is a really, exactly point, this. Hold on, hold on. a really important point, brother. It's a really important point. You have to answer this directly. Every single time. 
time going any to. of these two people well, I, have brought point. you a question, this is what you've done. I'm going to like do it in real time. Okay, mate. Yeah. You've done this. Yeah. So what you need to understand, everybody, is that you need to answer their question. Yeah. This is a very simple question. It's a yes or a no. Yeah. Did so, the father yeah. send himself? No. Did the, no. Does the father no. proceed so, himself? Okay, okay, guys. This text, my start point, is an illegitimate proof text to discuss the nature of the father and the nature of Yeshua, and I'll tell you why. Okay. In Luke chapter 24, we are given two witnesses okay. that after the resurrection of Jesus, he spent 40 days teaching his disciples which specific passages in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms were about him. And it even says he supernaturally opened their minds so he could understand the scriptures. The point is, gentlemen, this passage is never quoted in the New Testament okay. as speaking about Jesus, nor is it used to discuss the nature of God in the New Testament. So. You have plucked this verse from obscurity and you've elevated it into the position of a false God and by it you are trying to, That's not you are deceiving the point. people. It is wait, the point, wait, wait, ladies wait, wait, and gentlemen, wait, wait, wait. because this scripture is never used by Jesus. Oh. It's never used by Paul or Peter, ever. It, it How can you say it's irrelevant? How can you say because, it's irrelevant? Because, because you say, you, oh, look, if you're saying, you, you, look, yeah, exactly. Is you, it's no, it's not. You, you, you say, it, look, we, look wait, wait, no, no, let's not play that game. Look, if you're saying yeah. that Jesus never brings this up, or the New Testament never quotes this as talking about Jesus, yep. there's no relevance to our question to you. It does. No, we're, no it doesn't. You have to answer the question. Look, the, the, it's, not a, it's not a messianic you, prophecy. Was your, was your, no, no, was your, 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 you brought up about the spirit being a distinct person. So we're talking about the spirit. It says here that that Yahweh sent Yahweh and his okay. spirit. And so my Did, point was, gentlemen. Is that, so is Yahweh the same as his spirit? Yes. Yahweh okay. and his spirit are the same thing, indistinguishable. Are they the same person? They are. No. The spirit is not a person. Oh, okay. Oh, see, Jehovah. see, 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 you, you, you're, you're so close. You're so, when you say, so what is it? no, no, but, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there next. We'll get Wait, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second. You're, you're so close because you acknowledge that the spirit is not distinguished from Yahweh and his being. You acknowledge that. But however, where you mess up, well, yeah, of course. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But where Hallelujah, you brother. where you slip is where you say, ah, but he's not a person. The spirit is not a person. Because ah. you agreed earlier, you said that when someone comes forth from a person, they are a person. No, no, brother. Nature. I agreed to your questions. I answered them. Yeah, but your definitions don't apply to Jehovah God. Why? Because in 1 Corinthians 2:11, Paul tells you. It doesn't follow. It does, brother. Oh, no, you're, no, no, you're, you've no, made no, some. No, you've no, made no, some. No, you've no, made no, something no, up. Yeah. No, I haven't. And you're making stuff. Okay, I'm using scripture. No, you're not. So not I. Because I come forth from Have my I done mother, anything with scripture? Because, I, because I come forth from my mother, yeah, yeah. and I'm a separate and person from my mother, a person yeah, a person. you are now saying that this, because of one verse in John, yeah, yeah, comes forth from that the, father. the Spirit comes forth from the Father, the Spirit is a separate person. Well, I'm person. saying distinct. that distinct. interpretation distinct. contradicts the multiple clear texts Let, let's in the I have a question. Yeah, now, can I just, I just want to just do one and then you, wait, you go. Wait, okay? stay, no, stay here. I stay. No, I am. This is about Jesus. No, it's not about Jesus right now. We're talking about the Spirit. I'm going to talk about what I'm, Jesus I'm, says I'm about just, the Spirit. No, look, I'm just asking you right here. Do, who sends? Oh, guys, who sends the Spirit? According to this verse, the Father. Sends okay, the Spirit is the Father the Spirit. This okay. Oh. In Stuck in the middle of nowhere, close to home. Okay. So, there is a passage in Isaiah which is which is spoken about in Revelation a number of times, Brother. where it talks about the seven spirits of Jehovah. Yeah. Yes. And there is the prophetic statement that the root of Jesse will rise up, and the spirit, spirit of, the of Jehovah will be on him. And it talks about seven distinct spirits of the Father: the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge. The spirit of courage, the spirit of might, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of godliness, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Jehovah promised in the book of Isaiah, and you're aware of this, that he would raise up a human being, a servant, upon whom he would place his spirit. The point is, Scripture teaches us, ladies and gentlemen, that there is the spirit of Jehovah, as in his spirit, just like your spirit, but there is also the seven spirits of Jehovah God. Now, we read in the book of Revelation... Wait, is the spirit of Jehovah separate from the seven spirits? Yes. They're the same thing, man. Brother, brother. So look, in the book of Revelation, okay. so in the book of Revelation, we are taught
thought that the risen and the so you're all looking with the surprised faces because you never would have read Isaiah chapter 11. This is heresy. It's what? heresy. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 11, brother, because you know it. And it is a fascinating passage. It talks about the seven spirits of Jehovah. What now, does that have to do with my because question? Because the resurrected Jesus declares that he has been given authority over the seven spirits of Jehovah at his resurrection. That's not what he says. Yes, it is. This is, I am the one who holds, who has, who, who has control over the seven spirits of Jehovah. That is what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about what he's going to send after he's been resurrected. Uh, this is what, this, so this is the point. What was, so, what was my question? Is Jehovah sending his spirit? No, my question was, is, is the father the spirit that no. he sent? Yeah. So, the, the father and the spirit in one sense are indistinguishable, yeah? Yes. One and the same. Yes. The spirit of Jehovah is not a distinct person from the father according to the prophets, according to Paul, according to Yeshua. I, I, I got you. Look, yeah? look, this is, my, so, this, this is my question with what you just said. You said in one sense, the spirit is indistinguishable from the father. Amen. In what way are they distinguishable? Because you said he's not the spirit. No. Okay, so here's the question again. Yeah. Is the father the spirit? Yes. So the Holy Spirit. So the I got from the you. Now tell you what. So in Matthew. So the Father proceeds. Wait. So if the Father is the Spirit, the then the Father sent the Father, right? No. So look. No, no. Yes. Say it. The Father sent the Father. No. That's just say it. That's what. That's what. That's, that's, that's what your theology leads to. No, it doesn't. Because there are some passages in Scripture where the language is slightly confusing. Look in Matthew. This is not confusing. In Matthew chapter twelve. It's not confusing, guys. Does, is this confusing 12. to anybody? Is the is the Father the Spirit? No. Does the Father send the Spirit? Yes. Are they distinct persons? So, yes. Can you be the same person you sent? No. Is, okay. That's not confusing. Okay, so Isaiah says this. So you all saying you all agreeing with God logic, yet in Isaiah 40, 12, this is what Isaiah says, who has directed Jehovah's Spirit? It's a rhetorical question. Obviously. No one directs Jehovah's Spirit because it is the Spirit of Jehovah. Is it is the Spirit of Almighty God. Question. Look, in Matthew chapter 12, just listen, listen to this, please. This is an answer to the question. Yeshua explicitly teaches that the title the Spirit of the God, yeah, the Spirit and the Holy Spirit are all interchangeable for the Spirit of Jehovah. We it's know this. We're talking of a separate person. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah? Okay, okay. stop, we're stop. About Look, a separate person. We understand that the Spirit has all these different titles. We all understand this, right? The Spirit has different titles. Is one of the titles of the Spirit Father? Okay, so the Father is distinct from the Spirit, correct? No. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Okay. Get me, get me out of here. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. No, I'm done. I want to leave. I want to leave. I want to leave. It's not okay. Okay. Let me let me try to let me try to. Could you read out one Corinthians eleven? Can I just ask you a quick question? Can I just read this again? Can I just read this again, please, guys? Let's listen to what Paul says. Because you're all mocking me for saying the Spirit of Jehovah God is not a distinct person from Jehovah. But at the same time, you're saying that he's not the Father. This is what Paul says. All right, we gotta, we gotta wrap this up soon. But who among men knows the things of a man uh -huh. except the spirit of the man yeah. is in him? That's right. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, we copy that. Thus, no yeah. one knows the things yeah. of the God except the spirit of the God. Why are you applying a different rule to what Paul says here to and accept what these gentlemen are teaching? You are this directly contradicting. This is contradicting. To your audience. That's not contradiction. Do you know? Can you demonstrate the P and not P here? Lord, Lord, you just Lord, hold on. Lord, Logic number one. Just thing is, you just did something crazy. You just appealed to logic. Every time he's appealed to logic, you it in a philosophy. philosophy. Okay. Oh, no, no. Before your okay. brain malfunctions, well, let me finish, please. By the way. Okay. <laughs> Before your brain malfunctions, let me finish. Okay. He gave you a syllogism, which is logic. You said, well, that doesn't really make sense because there's times in scripture where this is that. But he used logic, which no, you can't contradict. It. You just appealed and said it's a whoa, whoa. You just okay, appealed guys, and guys, said that it's a that, contradiction. That, that, that description. The there. problem with it, super could clear. I please? Okay, it's very, <laughs> very clear. All of this is very clear. All of this is very clear. Okay, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna do the. We, we, we're gonna wrap up too. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna, I'm, well. I need to cook a Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that's very clear is this. Yeah. Yahweh sends His Spirit. Yahweh, in the sense of essence, is the same. The Father and the Spirit are the same in essence. That's why there's one God. That's very easy. We can account for this unity and distinction. However, the Father did not send Himself. Right. Neither did the Father did die proceed, on the cross. Did he proceed from the himself? Father did not eperuamon from Himself. Right. That is the Greek word in John.
John 15, 26. Scripture, scripture. In John, it says that the spirit proceeds Seeds from as he says. Come, comes out of. My question was, does anything else proceed from the Father? Not an emanation, it's a procession. procession. You tell me, brother. Nothing, no. nothing else. Okay, yeah. So this means that the Holy Spirit yeah. is not just God's power. Because God's power doesn't proceed from himself. Otherwise, there was a period where he didn't have his power. But eternally, the what? Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. Yes. The same way that the Son is begotten from the Father. Okay. Okay. Can I just Very encourage simple. you all to do a study on the seven spirits of Jehovah? That's a, that's a good, study. good study. Very great good study. study. Good study. Yeah. Guys, yeah. guys, look. That's, that's just the manifesting gifts. Energies. That's what? Like, it's the divine energies what? of God. We can talk about that in Exodus 33. We can go there. We can chat no, about no, that. No, no, let's just go to Isaiah 11. Don't okay, sorry, sorry. We gotta, this, we gotta wrap up. We gotta, guys, guys, seriously, on a serious note, we gotta wrap up. I need to, you know. No, you, you, you can. No, do you want to say something last, or you want to suggest us a study you said? I am very grateful for speaking to God Logic. Um, he, passionate man, you work very hard. Thanks. Um, and uh, I'm really grateful to have the opportunity to speak to you. Same. Um, I do hope that maybe off camera, clearly not now because you're heading back. Yeah. But um, I don't need to do stuff on camera. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we can, next time I'm out here, I'll be out here soon. We can. You know, let's get or maybe your dude can give me a number. I could come on your channel. But even just doing stuff off channel, so there isn't a requirement to have to win an argument, but we can just chat. Yeah. Um, that would be that would be cool because okay. I know you study the scriptures a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, but I'll just encourage you all just do a word study on the seven spirits of Jehovah and look at how Jesus, when he is elevated to his position as high priest, Jehovah God gives him authority over the seven spirits for the edification and building up of the church. I believe those spirits are something slightly distinct from the spirit of Jehovah. We agree. Yeah, we agree. Yeah, so, but yeah. Thank okay, you. Then, all right. This thing from the divine essence. Yeah. All right, guys. Good wrap up. Good conversation. Let's go ahead and move on and see what else we can get today, all right? All right. <laughs> all right. Jesus Christ be with you. That's right. Jesus Christ is Lord. Christ is King. Yeah.